My <laughs> my most satisfying curse word is dickhead. I don't feel like I need to say anymore. <laughs> Okay, Liverpool hometown slang. The one word that I feel like everyone uses the most is the word boss. So like if something's really good, you'd be like, oh, that's boss that. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. I think the most memorable moment that I have with Sandra was not necessarily on set. I always remember so vividly the first time that I met her in LA for my um, chemistry read. She was so welcoming and so generous and we, we did the scene from episode five where they meet for the first time in her house and she kindly gives me a plate of shepherd's pie. I think that, that whole experience of meeting her for the first time and playing through the scenes and really feeling like we had kind of found the beginning of something, I think, um, that is really significant in, in my memory of, of Sandra. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily interested in true crime. I'm a bit of a wimp. Saying that though, I do think as a society, we're always really intrigued by like the gory details of things, like say things that are in the newspaper and stuff. I think I was more interested in the psychological aspect of her. Um, I didn't kind of take any influence from any other fictional assassins because I just felt like she was so um, so different, and that isn't particularly like a genre of film that I would like usually um, like be drawn to. But I felt that she brought something kind of fresh. I don't really tend to listen to music like before a scene, but I sometimes will like make a playlist for a character. I listened a lot to I think I think they're called Little Dragon. I listened to a lot of them for Villanelle. Um, and also like the playlist of the show, they have the kind of soundtrack of the show on Spotify, which is pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, it just depends if there's like a, a scene where that's a bit more like emotional, then I might listen to a song that's more personal to me. I think the most exciting part of playing a villain is the fact that people, they question their morals and they find themselves sometimes being in support of her. I think she gets away with things that I never ever would, like for instance, flicking a bowl of ice cream on a small child. Um, I really lived through that, <laughs> through that moment. Um, and we're all villains sometimes. She just takes it to that extreme. I don't think she's too dangerous to love. I think what is, um, I think there are like redeemable qualities about her. I think people live through the mischief of her. I think that's exciting. I think she's strangely relatable, not in regards to the killing, obviously, but in everyday life and her choices and her fearlessness. I think that's what people admire about Villanelle, not necessarily what she does for a living.